Hi everyone, this is Gary from Fantastic Wonders and today in this lecture we are going to talk further about the Indian National Army or the Azad Hand Forge. Now you already know that we have covered the part of INA during the war time when the Second World War was going on. We have actually covered all that story during the World War II. Now we enter the next phase of the modern history of India and this is related to the post-war struggle. So we can uh, just say this that INA and we are talking about the post-war struggle. Let's begin with this one. Now uh, like always I would quickly give you the background of this lecture in a little more detail. Uh, now, with the end of the war, and the war had ended in April 1945, with this end, India's struggle for freedom, this entered into a new phase. And we all know that before this, we had also seen the revolt of 1942, and also the INA struggle, which had played an important role in revealing the heroism and determination of the Indian people. So these things actually exposed to the world heroism and the uh, nationalism and determination of the people of India. You can use these words if you want, if you want in your means uh, answers. This won't be of much use in prelim. Now we know that we also know this that a lot of people were arrested during this uh, the war's time struggle and when these people were slowly being released from the jail people started to look forward to another phase of struggle so we can say that uh, i'll just change the color for the sake of visibility we, we can just say that there was a, a war time struggle there were arrests people were released from the jails and on being released people thought what should we do and we want to fight against the Britishers so we thought that we will do the struggle again and this was the this was going to be the final struggle for freedom here onwards and this new struggle this new struggle uh, which was going to happen now this took the shape of the massive movement against the trial of the soldiers and officers of I in a this was the struggle against this particular uh, aspect which happened at this time actually uh, to understand this i'll give you one more background to this that in 1946 there were elections held and in these elections congress won in uh, few areas absolute majority it it, it won absolute majority in these areas that I have mentioned here absolute majority Madras UP Bihar Orissa and central provinces very easy to recognize on the map of India by now and if you cannot recognize these places on map of India I can tell you that you need to listen to the lectures earlier to this again there is something missing in your understanding then and after this uh, there's one more thing in Punjab also Congress was able to make the government in coalition with the uh, Akalis and the Unionists. This is important for us because uh, Punjab is later on divided and there are issues of uh, uh, communal rights also linked to it. We will be discussing this. And then a Muslim League which was the second largest winner, it, it won in Sindh. Sindh is just next to Gujarat, it's in Pakistan, right? And Bengal, you know uh, where it is. So it won in Sindh and Bengal. Actually, Muslim League was the second largest winner uh, uh, after Congress in these elections. Uh, around 58% seats uh, came to Congress and around 30% seats came, went to Muslim League. That, that is how the numbers were. To fight these elections, 
Congress had to do canvassing for the elections and in this canvassing for elections two particular demands were raised okay i uh, so the the war is over we know this then then there are elections and in elections there is canvassing being done in this canvassing two issues come to the surface one issue is related to the uh, that in 1942 you britishers did lot of rep repression and the quit india movement we talked about this repression already in the quit india movement lecture now there was a demand for an official inquiry followed by action in this regard this was the number one thing which was canvassed during the election second thing is very particular and this is related to the ina trials so this way also we come down to ina the topic of today's lecture the ina trials now to understand the whole story first i'll give you a quick summary of what was this ina trial and what happened and then we'll also go into details of uh, these trials right now government had decided that it will the british government that it would try in the red fort uh, few indians who had been uh, earlier officers of indian army and indian army is under officers of indian army now these indian army officers were essentially working under the british government britishers said that we are going to file a case against you we are going to sue you sue you but on what charges they were accused of having broken the oath of loyalty now mind it this can be a question in your prelim exam also that on what charges ina trials were done by the britishers so they were charged on uh, on the uh, uh, accusation of having broken the oath of loyalty to the british crown and because of this particular act they had turned into traitors but on the other hand we were saying that they are our national heroes so uh, the, on this charge trial was held and when this trial was being done government there was lot of pressure and because we were saying that uh, trials okay so so quickly right i'll just again summarize this for you world war 2 and then the, some people uh, i ina trials are being held we'll keep on finishing this chart also on the side let's draw a line for this purpose now in the in this trial there was lot of pressure on the government that what are you doing they are our national heroes how can you do this and so government thought that it was planning actually that we will announce that ina trials would be uh, confined to only those people who are guilty of brutality or active complicity i mean people who were actively involved who were accomplices so only those would be tried who were accused of extreme brutality this is because of the pressure by the indian britishers were thinking of announcing this but before this announcement could be made by the britishers that uh, only those would be tried who are being brutal what we did nehru said uh, nehru raised the demand of leniency in 1945 now this made the proposed statement by the britishers it looked like a response to nehru's demand than an act of generosity i hope you understand that anyway so this was how the trial was being done and uh, since it's a trial so there would be lawyers also and lot of lawyers at this time came to help uh, uh, the the defense of these ina prisoners uh, the, these are also called as uh, red fort trials because they were conducted at the red fort they the the name of the few lawyers who helped at this time are bhula bhai desai um tej bahadur sapru very famous people and k n kardju and then uh, nehru of course was there arna asif ali was there so this way right bhula bhai desai tej bahadur sapru k n kardju nehru and arna asif ali so 
th this way a lot of people were involved and after the elections after you know elections we, we, there also come after this trial uh, okay no trial is being held here and after the trials the uh, elections were done right and i just gave a quick reference to that already and then came the cabinet mission okay but now before all this this will be done in the upcoming lectures in this particular lecture i would quickly like to talk to you in detail about the ina trials now while elections were being held the campaigning would be done right it's obvious all elections have campaigns in them in the campaigning of the during these elections what is that one issue you think congress will be highlighting it is of course the ina trials and that is why actually uh, the question can be in the shape of discuss the features of ina campaign in fact in some of the meetings of uh, the campaign by the congress there was so much of talk about the ina that one could hardly differentiate whether it was an election meeting of congress or it was an ina meeting and in if we talk about the ina campaign uh, we can call this topic today as the features of ina campaign now ina was not just getting popular in the people even the press was giving it huge coverage initially in the press the demand of the people was that they should be given clemency because they were the misguided souls this was the demand but this was in by that time november 1945 came or we can say the later half of the 1945 came the uh, almost end of 1945 and uh, that was the time when red fort trials of ina men were uh, being conducted the ina men were being declared as the heroic patriots that is how it was going on in you won't believe this but when the trial was held of these ina men at red fort the attendance of the people who were there was more than 7 lakh people now i do not think that when Indi india recently won the world cup in cricket that time we had 7 lakh people sitting inside the stadium watching it so you can very well imagine the scale at which it was being done ina trials had a huge geographical expanse so let's talk about the expanse of this ina question the whole ina campaign it had in its ambit area of kurg of assam and also area right up to baluchistan which obviously pakistan is under illegal occupation and then sgpc also contributed 7000 rupees in this for the for, for the purpose of ina campaign all religious organizations of every kind for example i said sgpc is there rss is there and akali party was there akali party and justice party so whatever be the party everyone contributed hugely for the uh, further for furthering the cause of ina campaign hindu mahasabha sikh league everyone participated and not just this men of armed forces loyalist government employees so this is a typical question that can be asked in your paper that uh, armed forces participated did were they sympathetic to the cause of ina trials yes they were what about the loyalist the loyalist to the british even they were uh, coming in, in this ina campaign what about the government employees you, you might think they will be loyal to the government but by now they were highly politicized and were supporting the ina the congress regarding the ina issue now that there were so many men involved whose trial was being done for example now one of one of the names you can uh, remember is uh, shah nawaz hussain shah nawaz hussain is an important name gurbakhsh singh that's another name 
and Prem Kumar Sehgal. That's another name. These are the three prominent names. Actually, these are the people from influential family. Shah Nawaz Hussain, Gurbaksh Singh, and uh, Prem Kumar Sehgal. Prem Kumar Sehgal. Uh, he came from a very influential family. He was a uh, son of uh, Diwan Acharu Ram, and who was an ex judge of Punjab High Court. Right? Oh, this is just a side fact. And there was other people involved also. For example. Abdul Rashid was there, very famous person Abdul Rashid, and then Shingara Singh was involved. So these are the few prominent names. Now, just in case you forget these these names, I'll give you a slogan that was being used by the people at that time, and the slogan is this: "Lal Kile se aayi awaz, Sehgal dhello Shah Nawaz, tino ki ho umar daraz, daraz daraz means lambi umar ho unki." So this was the slogan being used. Now all these people were, as I said earlier, also were being tried for waging war against the king emperor. I'll share one very interesting fact with you. You will not find it in not many books. And this is about Shah Nawaz Hussain. Shah Nawaz Hussain uh, had a son, and his son's name was Mahmud. Right, and he was heading the Pakistan army. He was a part of Pakistan army. Now, because he was there uh, serving in Pakistan army, but his father Shah Nawaz Hussain was an Indian, in, uh, was an Indian, and he was part of the government. Many MPs at that time asked uh, Lal Bahadur Shastri ji that uh, Shah Nawaz Hussain should uh, not be given any ministry or any such thing. But then Lal Bahadur Shastri refused at that time because he knew that Shah Nawaz Hussain, whosoever his son might be serving, but he was committed to the cause of India. Now the next question that arises that as I have been saying that the trials were being held. Whenever there is trial, there are always few questions involved. Interestingly, in INA trials, the question was never uh, that the people who 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 were accused of uh, being against the royal king emperor. The question was never whether they were right or wrong. The question was never of right versus wrong. You just write these things as it is in the answer. The question was never of right or wrong. The question that was there was whether Britain had a right to decide a matter which concerned Indians. So Britishers were being targeted directly, and Britishers, when this uh, the rights of the Britishers were being questioned, the Britishers realized the significance of the INA issue. Thus, question is the the significance of INA issue. The question is that if they realize the significance of INA issue, can you imagine what is the significance of INA issue? can you think over some points uh, which you can write please pause the video here and try to write those points in your copy if you can and then come back okay now the importance of the significance uh, of this ina campaign lied in few things for example it brought a unity sense of unity in indians because if you see uh, and the hindu muslim sikh everyone was getting involved and issue was now not only any particular group versus particular group or religion versus any particular religion or a group versus religion now the question was india versus british and the there, there was diverse participation whether social or political groups everyone was now participating in fact this is one of the reasons that ina trial the issue of ina has been held by many to be the one of the last nails in the coffin of british empire in india number 3 is that the pitch and intensity of the campaign was huge the intensity of the campaign was massive number 4 is the geographical expanse about which i have already talked to you number 5 is that the it 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 shook the traditional bulwarks of the the raj as it was called the rule or the raj it was called the bulwarks 
of the British, that is the uh, steel framework or that is the bureaucracy, it was now shaken and British were realizing that because of these things, India just might slip out of their hands. But please understand, when we say that INA was the major reason because of which India got freedom, do you think any of these things could have developed without uh, the events which happened prior to this? Right beginning from Dada Bhai Naroji to this day, you'll have to link everything to these facts that how these things developed. Now, the next topic which is related to INA and we have discussed enough so much about and the importance the origin how it happened the next topic that is related to INA is that there were three upsurges three upsurges of national movement during the INA agitation I will be explaining this to you before that I will be drawing a quick chart for this and you can draw this chart with me it will be quickly drawn by me and you can just pause it draw it later as you wish this was in the winter of the 1945-46 so I'll draw the chart now Let us understand this chart. Now, there were three upsurges, three main upsurges of the national movement when INA agitation was going on. The three upsurges was, number one was in Calcutta and this happened in uh, November of uh, 1945. And then second, this was in Calcutta again and this happened in the February of 1946. And this third one is in Mumbai and this actually happened on 11th February and this happened on 18th February uh, 1946. 46. Now, in the first one, this was in Calcutta over the INA trials that they were being wrongly done. The second one was when there was an officer uh, by the name of Rashid Ali. Uh, Rashid Ali. Now, because he was given seven years of imprisonment against it, the second upsurge of the people happened in Calcutta. And this is on 11 February 1946. Imagine the impact of this and other factors that within a week, just a week later on 18th of February 1946, in Bombay, there was an upsurge by the Royal Na Indian Navy, RIN, and it went on strike. This, this is by RIN. There has been a question on this. I will dwell on the RIN revolt in a little bit of more of detail. Now, these are the three upsurges that you are seeing. All the three upsurges saw three stages. If we, if we talk about the first stage across all the three upsurges, what do we see is that in the first stage, it is much more peaceful uh, the students and the forward block and this is Islamia college students I see is Islamia college students all these people they march to uh, there's a place in Calcutta called Dalhousie Square where there is seat of government in Calcutta uh, and they refused to disperse and there was a lati charge against them if we talk about the second upsurge here, Muslim League uh, le uh, students, they led it and it was against the Rashid Ali, it was the, because the Britishers were against Rashid Ali, it was so happened. And here also, uh, Section 144 was imposed in Dalhousie Square in Calcutta. That is the main place, right? Just like Matka, Chonk of Chandigarh or uh, so many other places where people come and do their protest. So it was here in the Dalhousie Square of Calcutta where orders were defied and again there was Lati charge. And if, if we talk about the third upsurge, the first stage here is regarding the 1100 naval ratings of HMIS Talwar, is HMIS of Talwar. They struck 
work at bombay because they were against the uh, racism the kind of food that was given and abuses to boot that were being given to the naval ratings and b c that he is particularly famous this has been asked in prelim exam also that he was uh, who was the person who was arrested for crawling scrolling quit india on hmis talwar it was b c that who did that if we talk about the second stage in the three upsurges this first upsurge second upsurge third upsurge the second stage in all the three upsurges was pretty much common the mood was uh, anti british there was paralysis of the whole city of bombay and calcutta wherever that was in the second stage throughout in the second stage roll and rail and road traffic was stopped and lastly the streets were barricaded by the people of india and then came the final stage in all the three upsurges you see every upsurge went through three stages so we discussed the first uh, stage of all the upsurges second stage of all the upsurges now we are talking about the third stage of the upsurge and here uh, the uh, the in the first upsurge that is in calcutta uh, which involved which was over the ina trials uh, uh, the students Boycotted the classes. There were hartals. There were processions and so on. Second upsurge, there was nothing much uh, particular I can say which is comparable. And in the third, up, uh, you know, third upsurge, there there was major thing happening. There was strikes by the military establishment. This is military establishment striked in Madras, Delhi, Cochin, Andamans, um, Andamans, Bari, and so on. so royal indian air force you know royal indian air force it also striked in pune and ambala units and sepoy is at jabalpur went on strike if you see what is happening now are you able to understand the importance of ina these are the things you will have to mention in your uh, uh, answer on ina or rn revolt or your uh, protest against uh, rashid ali's arrest or ina trials you have to mention all these things because all these are interrelated just mold them slightly as per the demand of the question um, in fact um, talking about the significance of this i r n revolt uh, if i i can say that this revolt it gave an expression to the militancy in the popular mind people could come out people were angry against the uh, b- britishers now do not think that this militancy in the minds of the people was a result of one day it happened over the years rin revolt in particular it remains legend to this day the how heroically efforts were made and rin revolt royal indian navy revolt that i was talking about it literally it marked the end of the british rule it marked the end of british rule almost as final as the independence day Uh, some authors like bipin chandra say that the larger than the life picture was drawn of military militancy reach and effectiveness which might or might not be true india was literally on the brink of the revolution the indianness had awakened inside the indians it had crossed all the uh, barriers to give you a quick more detail about the royal indian navy uh, uh, revolt as you know already that it started on 18th february 1946 and it was it had its support from uh, let's say uh, karachi to calcutta now uh, there were many sailors involved in it in fact 10000 more than 10000 sailors 66 ships were involved in it and uh, communist party also supported it so communist party of india it supported it but please remember that uh, congress and muslim league did not support the royal indian navy revolt uh, congress and rom patel and gandhi they all were in opposition uh, to this because they thought that such an action would destabilize in india and india in their calculation was already on the verge of getting independence 
let me put it very clearly gandhi and patel and all of the leaders they thought including muslim league that india was about to get the freedom and such an action would lead to destabilization in the country and it will lead to violence on the large scale which ultimately will impact the country and thus they did not support it communist party of india had some other idea and they supported the movement because they thought that now we should get the freedom quickly probably they were not able to see the freedom coming now what was the reason uh, for which this royal indian navy revolt was held i have already shared that also maybe that the living condition was poor and uh, uh, food was not given and the bo- uh, abuses to boots were done against the indian navy so that is the reason now what happened in revolt i it it, it has a very good uh, very interesting aspect to it that uh, on the, on the ship uh, uh, on the ship uh, they had three flags hanging then there were three flags so what are these three flags no, no, the first flag was of the congress second of muslim league and third of communist party this shows that uh, there was downplay of the communal forces at this time now uh, on the end of this uh, revolt it was uh, called off after the meeting of uh, uh, patel with senior leaders of the rin uh, basically there were two leaders uh, which w- who were leading rin revolt it was one was ms khan and other was uh, madan singh so these two people were leading and then mr patel he had long discussions with ms khan and after that uh, revolt was called off but as you know when when whenever any revolt is there or it is it was called off but why will britishers leave them so what will happen britishers will punish them and britishers will conduct the court martials and even dismiss the people from the services and now i will share one very sad part of the history this is what wikipedia has to say i have not read any other sources regarding this but wikipedia says this that none of the people who were dismissed here were reinstated either into the indian navy or pakistani navy after independence which is sad actually and this is how the rn revolt ended now come uh, i come to that very debatable part of this that everyone says that because of rn revolt britishers on 19th february 1946 sent the cabinet mission to india which of course is also one of our upcoming topics in the upcoming lecture now bipin chandra in his analysis writes that uh, the the decision to send the cabinet mission had already been taken before 18th february 1946 a uh, few other authors have also confirmed this view that the decision had been already taken so we cannot really say that sending of cabinet mission was the direct result of rin uh, to put for the purpose of academics and for the purpose of our exam we can just write that probably uh, rin revolt uh, pushed the sending of uh, cabinet mission to india to certain extent though it was it cannot be said to be completely the result of rin now next uh, topic is the limitations of the rin revolt what are the limitations of a uh, 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 whole of the three upsurges rather that we have discussed number one was that only the militant section took part in the revolt not everyone was military mili- uh, was having this military outlook number 2 is that there was no place for the liberal or even conservative groups which had rallied earlier for ina causes so these people were not interested in the violence uh, liberals or conservatives number 3 is that these uh, all these upsurges they were very short lived now if, if you compare to earlier struggles whether in cm or cdm or qim or whatever the struggle be uh, for example the upsurge at calcutta lasted from 11 to 13 february 1946 and it was quieter when uh, rin revolt as you know took place on 18 february 1946 and this 11 to 13 february 1946 the when this revolt was happening the second one this revolt had gone quiet this was quiet uh, i'll just correct it quiet why 
that shows that uh, how how limited impact this was having number 4 is that uh, these upheavals were largely confined to the urban areas whereas if you recall gandhi statement india lives in its villages india lives in her villages so that that's uh, a huge limitation it was having Uh, but a general ina agitation which was happening before the uh, violent three upsurges it had reached the, the remotest villages also now uh, uh, the the communal uh, unity that was happening here it was more of organizational unity than the unity in the minds of the people so communal unity that were that had happened here was not really the unity the kind of communal unity we expect to happen and then uh the for example you know if, if it had been true that uh, there was really authentic communal unity then just 6 months later uh on 16 august 16 august 1946 there was communal frenzy in calcutta and same calcutta on 11 to 13 february uh in the second month of 1946 there were communal harmony and in the eighth month there is no communal harmony what kind of communal unity had been created so we can say that the three upsurges after the ina during the ina campaign were not did not really unite the people of india and uh, then there were uh, you know it happens all the time people uh, in maratha battalion in bombay uh, they rounded up the ratings and restored them to their barracks so maratha battalion uh, did not play the role as was expected of them at that time i'm not saying the marathas are bad they are good but that time this particular thing happened so that is pretty much about ina to sum it up and to give you just few general points about ina i will quickly share them number is number one is that uh, we can say that the three upsurges that i d- discussed with you they were actually an extension of the earlier activity which i have been saying for a while now with which was uh, congress was of course associated and muslim league was associated and uh, everyone was associated the people of india were like so the three upsurges here they were result of past okay number two is congress election campaign the advocacy of the ina cause and highlighting of the excesses of the 1942 all these led to three upsurges that took place between november 1945 and february 1946 okay the, the so we can say the the election campaign at that time that was being done and advocacy of ina cause and you know highlighting of the excesses of 1942 these three things did contribute to upcoming of the three upsurges british said that the primary cause of R- rin mutiny mutiny was the speeches during the election campaign british was uh, themselves saying this thing please understand that these three upsurges were different from earlier activities in the point that they were uh, violent they were flagrant challenge to authority and there was an also almost an explosive situation number 5 is that the congress and the communists they together asked the people to calm down and peace vans uh, did the rounds of uh, uh, karachi during the R- rn revolt so congress and the communists uh, uh, all they were appealing for the peace at this time number 6 is that uh, you must know this thing also that gandhi was sp- specially critical of the ina upsurges especially uh, of the uh, this rin revolt gandhi and uh, patel as i said because they thought that it will lead to much more destabilized india because freedom was literally on the verge of it and nevertheless because of our and revolt britishers w- w- how did britishers react so we can think l- look at this angle that when there is our and revolt the britishers came and they gave us uh, they gave because these upsurges rather in uh, in december of 1946 they announced that only those ina members who were accused of murder or brutal treatment of fellow prisoners would be brought to trial others were free largely people were held free imprisonment sentences against the first batch were remitted in 1947 the january of 1947 
uh, imprisonment sentences they were remitted okay so imprisonment they were remitted number three is that indian soldiers were withdrawn from india china border and indonesia indonesia by february 1947 because the britishers were now scared that what indians just might do and then the decision to send the cabinet mission was taken uh, rn revolt you know took place now some say that rn revolt uh, rn revolt led to sending of the cabinet mission but uh, some people say that it was not because the decision had already been taken on the 22nd january of 1946 it is on record according to them and all only announcement was made which was right up at the time of the revolt and second day of the revolt so that th this is was uh, this was about the britishers here and the congress strategy was that uh, because everyone says why didn't congress interfere because congress as i said or, or patel or gandhi all this stand was that they wanted a violence free india they didn't surrender to power play the revolt would go out of control this revolt was different in the sense that it was violent this can be asked to you congress did not support and number 3 is there were no negotiations in this revolt gandhi said mutiny was badly advised people did not take permission they, they were not having the leaders as they should ideally be having here now just to quickly tell you what we have done that by the middle of june 1945 when the leaders came out after being arrested they were surprised that people are ready to fight and then in november 1945 we talked of the ina trials and then if in the winter of 1945 to 1946 the month of february we talked about the three upsurges in this way the whole of the ina is over this much is enough for the purpose of our exam you can always go into much much more detail the next lecture will be on the cabinet mission of india we will go into full detail of it why it came and what did it bring with it and all those things and now the one last thing please do share this lecture with lot of other people if you like this lecture do not forget to click on the like button if you like it and if you want all these videos to come in your email box then you will need to subscribe to us and that you can do by clicking over here on the subscribe button and thank you so much for watching this lecture